I'll just say yes. Now, my brothers and sisters, this morning we are looking at the, the case study of, of, of Joseph in the Bible as we explore political leadership. And uh, it, is, it is an interesting thing that everybody has like a storyline to himself. Everybody who is seated in this auditorium this morning, you have a storyline to you. There's something that has made you to be you. And without those things that you went through, you wouldn't have been you. And uh, as we explore political leadership, we are looking at Joseph, a man who sprang from the jaws of defeat and embraced the victory that God had planned for him based on leadership. And so that is what we're going to be exploring this morning. Now when we look at Joseph, we are looking at a man who, first, whose life, first of all, begins in prison. I mean, begins from his, the, the, the brothers, but the, the highlight of his life is actually, I mean, actually takes place after he's thrown in the pit and he begins a journey from prison. This is a man who actually had done the right thing and honored God in his life, but was in prison. A man who has been in prison because he has refused the advances of a wicked woman. That is the man I want us to talk about this, uh, this afternoon. A man who has been in a place of hardship, but even in the place of hardship, he is faithfully serving the Lord. He is not shaken by what is happening around him, but he's holding on to God and he's telling God, God, it is so hard for me. My brothers have forsaken me. My, uh, 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 my employer has thrown me in prison because I've refused the advances of his wife. Yet, I'm struggling. So this guy is actually in the place of hardship, but remains faithful. Reminds me the words of Job who, say, who told God, God, though you slay me, I will still serve you. And sometimes the storyline of these particular people begin to affect our lives. We begin to think about these storylines and we begin to ask ourselves some key question. Can I be faith counted faithful even in the midst of a fiery furnace? Can I be counted faithful even when I'm going through a fiery furnace experience? Because most of our Christianity today is a Christianity of favors. As long as God blesses me, has given me a good job, a good husband, a good family, then we are good. We are fine. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. We like saying that every day. But wait until you are in that position where everything is going against you and still God still demands that you remain faithful. And I believe when God looks at our generation today, He's looking for the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who would say, Lord, we are not going to bow to these idols. In fact, in fact I, I like what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say. They said, we are, not we are not careful to answer you in this matter, O king. But our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow to these idols. So we are looking at a man here who is delivered from pre who is delivered into prison, but even in the midst of that particular season, he is still calling on the name of the Lord. He is still shouting and saying, God, you are still at work in my life, despite the challenges I'm facing amidst my brothers, amidst my employer, amidst all these guys in Egypt, you are still God. And sometimes I look at the story of Joseph and I begin to ask myself, God, what exactly were you up to? Because it was very easy for God to pick Joseph and just place him in the, in, in the palace without going through the, the entire process. Why was, that, why was that process important? But when I, I mean, when I study 
read this book, I, I, I got to realize that there are several components that really God looks for in leadership that even as you, as, as, we, as, as you aspire to be a leader, not even just in a political field, but as you aspire to grow into leadership, there are some things that happen within some of these components that God's man must go through to be able to be an effective leader, whatever he is. We are all complaining about corruption. We are complaining about theft in our government. We are complaining about so many, uh, so many uh, things happening in our country today. But the question that God is asking her, us is this. Who among us? Who among us is ready to go through God's process? And when you go through God's process, he prepares you to be the kind of leader that you're supposed to be. I looked at the story of Joseph and something amazing actually came to my attention because this guy is a faithful servant. He is in prison for doing a crime he has not committed. He stays in prison waiting for God's providence. And I realized that God's providence comes in several components that I want to talk about this morning. In the first service, I, talked to, I, 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 I mentioned this, and I'm going to mention it to you. That any time God wants to do something, for, I mean, something, or to raise a leader, one of the things that God does is that he, re he releases a season of delay. A season of delay. A season of delay. You know, I, I looked at the story of Joseph, and I realized that Joseph... Stayed in prison for two full years before he was released. In fact, while he was in prison, he interpreted the dream of the butler and expecting the butler to actually uh, 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 remember him when he gets to the king's throne. But this guy went out and after he was released, he forgot Joseph. And Joseph had to stay longer and longer in what I call God's waiting room. You know, it is not easy to wait. I see some of you come to my office and sometimes when you find a queue, hallelujah, you come in there, you find a queue, you say, Lord, you know, how can I wait for, 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 for Rev to finish with that guy in there? And then wait until you come, there is a queue, and then you're standing and then there's a guy in there who's not in a hurry. Hello? Have you been there? So you're waiting in that queue and you're wondering, God, that guy, until you begin to feel like whatever you have is more pressing than, 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 than what that guy has. And then you know what you do? You come to pass his door. Hallelujah. You open the door and peep. Passy, I'm here. Hallelujah. That's what you guys do, right? And then... Because he says, oh, yeah, 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 just give me a few minutes, I'll be done with this guy. Hallelujah. And then you say, yeah. And then you go out, and the guy sticks for the next one hour. Hallelujah. And you're waiting and waiting. Waiting is never easy. It is never easy. When you feel like you're being delayed over something, it's never easy. You know? I was making fun of my wife the other day. There's a time I took her to hospital, and when she was due... She was among other women who were due with our firstborn. And these women who were due at that time, I happened to have passed somewhere and I could see them. They are in labor, but they are dancing. Hallelujah. It's like there is electricity going through their body. One of them actually was biting her fingers. Aki. Joni Utaniona. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, that's the time hey, if you're a man hallelujah you stay away huh? you know she is waiting for this baby to come there is some sort of delay time, I mean the right time to bear the child has come yes but you know what there is some sort of delay you know the point I'm driving home this morning, this afternoon is that delaying is never easy. I mean, waiting is never easy. It is never easy. Joseph had
had to stay at the point of waiting. Why did God have Joseph to wait? Let me just say these two things. One, God wanted Joseph to wait to teach him patience. One, two, to teach him dependence. Because God knew that if he allowed Joseph to be king without this process, when his brothers would come back, if Joseph was not patient enough, he would kill them. So God foresaw that and he said, okay, I'm going to pass Joseph through this journey of delay. I usually call it divine delays. God's waiting room. You are there, God has forgotten you, you feel like God has forgotten you. You are there and it seems like your prayers are not being answered. You have gotten saved 10 years ago. Somebody else got saved yesterday. You, you've been praying for a job for five years. This guy got saved yesterday and prays for a job. The following day, he gets a job and leaves you looking at him. And these things are happening. And God, and you're there and you're waiting and you're God, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me, O oh Lord? Why is it that I am faithful in other people's weddings? but mine is still not there. Don't look at me like that. I'm talking to you. Hello? Has, it, has anybody been there? Don't raise your hands. Hallelujah. Why is it God? Why am, I, why am I so faithful to your work? I am doing all I can. I pronounce all the scriptures in the Bible until my lips go dry. Then another person comes and he shrubs the scripture and gets a blessing. Hallelujah. So what, what happens to me? Delay. Delay. God places you in his waiting room to teach you these things. And the funny thing is this about God's delay. Let me tell you. The more you don't learn your lesson during the delay, the more the delay takes longer. Hmm. All right. So you stay there and you're praying and telling God, God, oh God, oh God, oh God, remember me. Somebody else comes and prays the same prayer, God blesses that person. But I realized that anytime God allows a delay, what happens? It is a lesson he's teaching you. And your coming out of that delay experience is directly proportional to your response to God's obedience. Some of us have stayed in God's delay for a long time. Why? Because you've not learned the lesson. So God is teaching you patience. So you walk around, you love the Lord, and then somebody comes and just gossips about you. Who made the patience God is teaching you is to be able to deal with anger, anger matters. So you are there, you're struggling, you're telling God, God, I am struggling with. I'm struggling with matters of anger. So God gives you a school to go through. And then it makes sure that he brings your worst enemy your way. Your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that guy comes and you see him sw swinging a hammer. Say, you welcome to Mr. Binyako. Hello? You see him, you begin to shake like this. Your, your, your lips begin to shake with anger. And then, at your cover you do, you, you pull it the Nigerian way. And then you call him ostrich. <laughs> and then God says, okay. You call my creation an ostrich? Seven more years. Seven more years. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, we take these things very lightly and very much for granted. But the truth is, there are people in this congregation today who would have been out of their situations many years ago, many dear months back. But the reason why you are Pussyfooting, mark timing, dilly dallying, and delaying is because you have not learned your lesson. Ask your neighbor, have you learned your lesson? Ah. 
Some of you got married and God has raised your wife to teach you patience. Or oh, some of you will get that yesterday. Hello? Or you got married and your husband, ha! God just raises him. Let me tell you, if you, now want, to, if you want to know whether you're, you are born again, get married. Hello? Ambassador Skona, am I saying the truth? Eh? If, 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 if you want to know whether you are saved, ask your neighbor, are you going, born again? If, if you don't know whether you are saved, get married. There are things that God will do. Okay, oh Lord. Hmm. Delays. Divine delays that God allows your way to teach you lessons. Joseph went through delay. And let me tell you, in leadership, God will not just pick you like, like, like anything on a chessboard or like popcorns and remove you and place you somewhere else. He will not do it. Every person who desires to get into leadership, whether political or any kind of leadership, must go through God's process. God's process. And we all have that in us. God's process. Not easy. But accomplishing. The more faithful you stay in that process, the more God blesses you. Pharaoh and his men look at Joseph and they think they're in control. But what they do not know is that God is in charge. In Isaiah 46 verse 10, there's a very popular scripture that I love so much. God speaks, to, uh, God speaks through prophet Isaiah. And he says that for as surely I ha as I have purposed, so it shall stand. So it did not matter whether Pharaoh, I mean Pharaoh uh, knew Joseph or not, whatever, I mean, whatever Potiphar did, what God was actually saying is that Joseph was in prison, yes, but it is only God's purpose which must stand. It is the, it's only God's purpose which must stand. Now, I want to read a scripture from, uh, from, from, from Isaiah 43. And, 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 and this, this happened to be one of the scriptures that, on reading, inspires me a lot. I, I, I go through it all the time, and every time I go through it, it's amazing. Isaiah 43, verse 13. Now, this is what it says. It says, Yes, and from the ancient days, I am he. This is God speaking. And no one can deliver out of my hand. And then God says, when I act, who can reverse it? When I act, who can reverse it? As in God is saying that when we are obedient to his will, no matter what kind of delay that comes our way, when he acts, who who can reverse it? You know, I've been thinking about the purpose of God. And everybody is crying all over. Oh, it's Jubilee. Oh, it's NASA. Oh, it is independent. You know, those, those eh? you know, everybody is, 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 is jumping, eh? And there's a whole lot of noise in the city. But I've told God, and I've prayed, and I've told God, God, whether NASA, Independent, Jubilee, whoever, as long as God's purpose comes to pass, let it be so. And let me tell you this. Joseph, let me, tell you, let, 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 let me, let me show you something from Joseph's storyline. After Joseph actually goes through that delay process, God makes sure that the king gets a dream. And in this dream, actually, this guy call, he gets disturbed and greatly distressed. He calls wise men to interpret the dream. The wise men, because they were operating on the law of guesswork, could not interpret the dream. These guys tried to look for answers for this king's dream. They could not. And so what happens is that Joseph actually is called, I mean, the, the butler actually remembers that there's a guy he left in prison who can interpret dreams? So God raises Joseph from the prison to come and interpret somebody's dream. As in God causes a problem in the king's palace so that Joseph can interpret that, I mean, can, 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 can give a, a solution to that problem. 
I have, I have come to discover in, 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 in God's, in, 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 as we walk with God, that when you have been faithful in God's delay period, waiting period, God's waiting room, when you've been faithful, God stirs up a situation that will only favor you and favor your gift. Hey, hello. You know, I, I, I have learned there are many opportunities that you can answer to, but there is that one opportunity that God can open for you to favor your gifting. Why? Because you have been faithful in the delay period. It is said that the gift of a man makes room and causes him to stand before great men. And that gift can only be used effectively on doors that God would open. One reason why many people are not experiencing these breakthroughs is simply because that delay, how faithful have you been in that delay? Are you utilizing God's gift in the right way? Joseph was in prison. And even in the prison, he was still dreaming. Dreaming. He's sleeping, he dreams. He wakes up, he dreams. Nasizi dreams that was the ugali na sukuma, hallelujah. Dreams, proper dreams. He's just dreaming. Oh, oh, he dreams. He dreams, he dreams. He gets up and he uses his dream to encourage the prisoners until he was exalted among prisoners. Faithfulness in your place of delay. Faithfulness in your waiting room. And that's what I want to talk about. In leadership, there's got to be a season of faithfulness in your waiting room. Where you're there, it does not matter. Oh, you come here and you see the praise team singing and you're wondering, God, when will you begin to sing? No. Begin to sing in the mirror. Hello? Begin. When am I going to preach? Begin to preach to trees. Hello? When am I going to, you know, when am I going to make a million? Be faithful with that 10 shillings that you have. You know, these are the simple things we teach people, but we ignore because we are the microwave Christians, digital Christians. We want everything quickly, but we are not looking at the process. But God is actually bringing up a very important, a very important teaching here that for Joseph, he had to be in a place where he is so faithful in there until God creates a circumstance. And I like it when God creates a circumstance for you. Because whoever, is, I mean, who unto you when you're seated in somebody's position that God has created that position for? I've been in situations where I've seen God creating positions for people. And let me tell you, it is so dangerous to sit on a position that you know is not yours, but belongs to somebody who is a child of God. <laughs> now I was trying to imagine whoever was the magicians who are all holding the, the, the position, trying to Im imagine. The last time we hear about the magicians is after Joseph interpreted the dreams. They were all fired. Fired, without benefits. Fired. Hey. You know, fired without benefits. I mean, who unto you when you're fired? But why they, why they fired? Because there was God's own somebody who has been faithful. Who has told God, God, though you slay me, I will serve you. Though, though he booted me ay, 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 through an SMS, I will still serve you. Hallelujah. Though I was dumped, I will still serve you. God, though I went through to pass his office and stayed there, I wasn't able to see him today. Tomorrow I will see him. Be quiet, but I know what, you're, what you, you guys go through. You know, when can, some of us when we wait, we say, "Ah, kwani kona o yumutu is this long? Mimi na nda zangu na ishia," and you go, and the people who have lost their blessings through impatience, you're not patient. A couple walked into my office some, I think, two years back. This was a man, f I think, from Europe, and a, 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 a guy from a, a lady from here. And they told me, Reverend, we want to get married. I told them, when do you want to get married? They tell me this Saturday. I asked them, how long have you known each other? Six months. Okay. So how did you guys meet? Uh, Reverend, we just met today, but we've been talking on Facebook. Hmm? 
guys have been talking on uh, Facebook, yeah? So you met for the first time. So I tell the guy, okay, fine. Can I, can I just have a word with you after two minutes? I want to have a word with this lady here. So the guy walks out. So the lady remains. So I ask the lady, so you got this guy on Facebook? And she's like, yeah. She's like, yeah. And then I ask her, you know, so, so what are your comments? Aki Rev, what the, pitch, the picture he placed on Facebook is not him. He's so old. So I'm like, really? So what are you doing? You? You know? To cut the long story short, I told him, the Bible is very clear. An inheritance gained hastily in the beginning will never be blessed in the end. You can't just afford to do things in a hurry and expect God just to bless you. There must be a process. There must be a process. Any marriage that does not go through courtship, any marriage that does not go through a time of proving, a time of testing, automatically and then ends in crisis. It's a fact. And the problem is that we're having people who want, we want everything with speed. We want a job with speed, we don't want to work for it. We, we want a job quickly, we want to get a master's, a PhD, we go to River Road. Yeah? We want speedy papers. Yet there is a process that God's person must go through. Now, I want to conclude by saying this. Joseph actually goes on actually waiting on God. He is talking to God daily. God is opening doors for him. And when he begins to interpret the dream of, 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 of the king, something happens. God begins to align everything in the right time. Everything in the right time. He makes sure that the right person is there to usher him to the king. He makes sure that the right interpretation is there for the king. He makes sure that everything is on time with precision. And I, keep, I, 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 I ask myself, in physics we learn, we learn about atoms. And the, how, I mean, whatever happens, you know, in terms of the orbiting of the atoms, we learn how minute they are. To the naked eye, we cannot see them. Yet God is the owner of these atoms. We go to, uh, to, the, to the great galaxies. God is great. We know the planets. In fact, in my primary school, I was taught about the nine planets. Nowadays, my, my son told, tells me there are even more than nine. There are ten or eleven or twelve. Going through the orbit. And I, I, I don't dispute that because God is great. He can do anything. God can create anything. And I ask myself, if God is as great as the galaxies, as the Milky Way, and all, even more than that, and is able to discover the minute things and, and create the very minute things we study about, what can't God do for you and me? What can't God do? Why should we hurry up? Why should we be in a hurry? Why should we, why should we try and omit God's process? Because leadership that does not go through God's process is automatically a crisis. And let me tell you, there are leaders in our country today, the reason why they're giving you and me a headache is simply because there is a process they never went through. They never went through. And that's the whole reason why we have this problem of betting. People don't want to work, they want to bet. Ah. Okay. Now, you, I want to talk to betters in here. Hallelujah. You are betting and you are in here. Hmm? You know, let me tell you something. God, God created us to be able to, to work with our hands to earn from the sweat of our brow. God has called us to work. God did not tell Abba, Adam, and because of what you have done, you, thou shalt bet. No. He didn't say that. That's why you're having a bunch of many lazy fellas. People who don't want to work simply because they've been told you can use 50 bob to get 20 million. 
Are you in your sense? Try to imagine you going to even that neighbor seated next to you. Ebu, tufanya hivi, nisaidia na finje, unige 20 million. Doesn't make sense. And then they bring a lot of adverts on TV to delude you. So that you can participate more and stop working. And before long, you remain there, you're busy watching TV with your teeth, seeing people claiming they have won, yet you're wasting your time. God's process, you cannot, go, there are no shortcuts with God. There are no shortcuts. And I want to say this very openly, in whatever context you are in, in whatever context you are in this afternoon, you could be the reason why you have delayed your miracle. You could be the reason why you've delayed your blessing. You cannot blame God. I meet people coming to me telling me, Pasi, I have a lot of, my CVs are good, nini, I've not gotten a job. I ask myself, okay, you've not gotten a job. What are you doing to attract that job from God? God has given you bare hands, two hands, two legs. What are you doing with them? Are you able to be inventive enough to ask God, God, you've given me these hands. As I work, God, may you come my way. Let me tell you this. When Jesus met Peter, when Jesus met the, the disciples, actually, I mean, before, he, I, mean, I mean, when he called the disciples, do you know where he found them? He found them fishing. He didn't find them idle, betting. Hello? He didn't find them, he didn't find them betting. He found them fishing. So, it is very important for you to ask yourself, God, as I wait, what do I do? What do I do? There, there are many, let me tell you, if God created the whole earth and the whole universe and the galaxies, I don't see him lacking space for you to do what you're called to do. He has it. But the problem is, we are so lazy on our prayers, we don't pray. So we don't hear from God. And at the same time, I mean, we... When others are blessed, we begin to feel jealous. And God increases the delay. Let me tell you. <laughs> God may have planned that your delay is going to take maybe seven years. So year one, you're faithful. No anger. Year two, faithful. Year three, oh God, thank you. Year four, year five, and you're working very well. Year six, and then when you get to year six, God brings another guy. One who is going to test you to the uttermost. Hallelujah. And the guy just comes and maybe he slaps you. Or does something weird. And then you're like, ah, you! And you throw all those words. You know which words you throw. And then God says, oh, okay. I'm not through with him yet. He takes you back to year one. That's what he does. The Israelites stayed in the wilderness. How many years? 40. They were not supposed to stay 40 years. They stayed very long because they did not learn their lessons. I've been praying for this service and I've been asking about God. You've given me young people, very potential people. God bless them with jobs and God reminds me, okay, tell them to be faithful in their waiting rooms. What do you do in your private waiting room. What do you do in your waiting rooms? And that's the question God is asking us this evening, I mean this afternoon. What do you do while you wait? What do you do? What do you do? What is the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? What is the first thing you think about on a Monday morning? Oh! And you stretch like this. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it God thank you or is it betting? <laughs> I want to request that we rise, we rise from our, from our, on our feet. What, what is this? What is this? What is this? Because let me say this. In political leadership, quality politicians would only come when quality process is followed. 
There's a whole lot of talk, a whole lot of campaign. But if you're here and you're campaigning for a post, or you're believing God to be somebody, a, a senator, whoever, in the coming years, I would implore you to remain faithful on your waiting room. On your waiting room. You know, one of our spiritual daughters was working as a house help. She was working as a house help. And she worked there faithfully. Faithfully. Taking care of those kids. Taking care of, of that house. Just, being, just making sure it is clean as a house help. She was born again. And what she, what she would do with these children, these children are not hers, but she would treat them like her children. Pray for them before they go to school. When they come from school, teach them, help them with the homework and all that. When the boss comes, when her boss comes, she has cooked, she has done everything. Very responsible. Very responsible. Stayed there for about eight years, working as a house help. As a house help. Faithfully. On the day of her promotion, something interesting happened. One guy just walked into the pastor's office and asked the pastor, you know what? I am looking for somebody to empower. I am looking for somebody I can empower. Would you recommend somebody that I can empower? And the pastor remembered, I have this girl in the house who has been faithful. And talked to this guy and told him, you know what? This girl has been faithful and is a girl I can recommend for you to empower. Went, got, the, got this young lady. She was willing. She was taken to school. She, had, she was way behind in her secondary work. Went, passed her secondary school. Got to, got her degree. Got a scholarship to go to the U.S. Has done her master's. And right now, she is working. And I can tell you, the beauty about what she's doing is that she's been able to empower herself as a doctor. How did that happen? The waiting period. And God is saying, there are many people who are crying to him in this auditorium. Many. You are crying. You are praying. You know, in the morning when I got up to pray and I was telling God, God, what do I do? And he said, there are many people who are crying to him for opportunities. But you are not faithful on your waiting period. That's a problem. You are not faithful. And today I said, I'm going to pray for people that God will grant us grace to be faithful in our waiting period. I want us to bow down our heads, please. I don't know. This is a very difficult altar call for me to make. But I feel the Lord just tugging my heart to make this altar call. I know the people who are seated in this congregation are saying, Lord, I have not been faithful in my waiting period. I have not I have not been faithful in my waiting room. They have, I have damaged my waiting room. There are cracks on people's waiting rooms here that God wants to heal as you wait. I feel I want to pray for people who want to make it right with God at this time. I feel like there's somebody who came in this service and he threatened God. God, I'm going to backslide because you've not been faithful to me. I don't know why I'm hearing that in my spirit. But people who have accused God, God, you've called God names, you have threatened God because things are not going right. God is a merciful God. This, this afternoon, I want to pray for something very special upon this group of people. I want to pray for strength. I want to pray 
pray for energy. I want to pray for an, a special anointing for the waiting room. And I know I have people who are in God's waiting room and they're praying and they're saying, God, would you give me the anointing for the waiting room? And that's what I want to pray for this afternoon. If you're here in this service, wherever you are, I just want to request you, just walk your way forward that I may be able to pray for you. As the praise team comes in front, I want to request them to come and help me here. If you are this kind of person and saying, Lord, I need strength. I have accused God. And you know, are, you, know you, you know where you have been with God. You've accused God. God, you've not been faithful to me. God, you've not been able to do it for me. Yet God holds you accountable with those words. This is your day. I want us just to bow down our heads and think within our hearts. Shut your eyes and meditate upon this. In the name of Jesus, even as we pray together for the glory of God. Praise Him, would you just lead us in, a, in some, some worship, please? Amen. 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 God's waiting room. Come on, quickly. If you know you are this person. Amen. Amen. You have messed up God's waiting room. Would you just come and stand in front here, please, quickly? God's waiting room. SMO. One more time. Oh yeah, Karu. Oh He wants your proof of stewardship. He wants your proof of stewardship. There are people who will never drive their own cars simply because you mistreat other people's cars. You run them on potholes carelessly and you come to God and tell God, God, give me my car. That was God's waiting room for you and you missed it. And this morning, I want to, this afternoon, I want to make a very important prayer for those of you who have come here. My prayer is that God, let us, let there be no cracks in the waiting. Let there be no cracks. Let there be no cracks. Let there be no cracks. I don't know why I'm feeling there are still more people coming. You know, if you, if you need to be in this altar call, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. This, this is a very serious altar call. Very serious altar call. Very quickly. Just get up here. You know you need to be here. You know you need to be here. You don't mess about God's waiting room. You don't mess any waiting room. But you don't mess God's waiting room. You don't mess it. You don't mess it. Yes, we are waiting Lord. for you. Come on the way from behind. Yes, I, I, I am not finishing this service yes, before I pray Lord. for those. My is yours. My God, my God, my God, my God. Yes, Lord. My God, my God. Keep on coming. Yes, Lord. Keep on 
coming. Keep on coming. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Jesus. Don't mess God's waiting room. You don't mess God's waiting room. No way. No way. No way. When I say yes, God's waiting room. God's waiting room. God's waiting room. Just put your hands before the Lord like this. You that are standing behind as we pray for these that have come in front. Very loudly, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I want you to pray this prayer. Everybody say, Lord Jesus. I want you to say it loudly, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus this, afternoon, this afternoon, I realize, I realize that you have a special plan, that you have a special plan for, me. for me. You planned it. You, planned it. you, orchestrated, it. you orchestrated it. You designed it, you designed that, it. That, I that I may be blessed. You predestined, you predestined and, settled and settled my destiny. In advance. in advance this afternoon, this afternoon I, first I first want to thank you for where I am, where I am. Today, today I confess my sins, confess my sins to, you. to you I'm sorry Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. for the way I have murmured the way I have complained the way I have been jealous the way I have been impatient. Lord Jesus, I have cracks in my waiting room. You gave me a waiting room to wait on you. But because of my sin, my blessings have been delayed. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me. Today, I rededicate my life to you. Lord Jesus, take me, cleanse me, wash me, fill me with faith to believe you for my miracle. Never again will I complain about anything.
but I will join David in giving thanks to you in everything. I thank you for, for, for all that I have gone through. Father, thank you that I don't have a job, but my job is coming. Thank you that I don't have a husband. I don't have a wife, but my wife is coming. Thank you, O oh Lord, that I don't have a business, but it is coming. Thank you that I am not a leader yet now, but my position is secured. I choose today to receive your will for my life. Let your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. I receive it. I believe it, I take it, and I celebrate it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. One more time I say yes Lord. yes Lord Yes to your will Yes Lord My life is That is our prayer In Jesus name Amen A big hand clap for Jesus You know, while I was praying and my eyes were closed, I just saw a manifestation in my spirit. Amen. And I saw this hand just come on a wall that has cracks and just sealed every crack. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Amen. And, and I hear the Lord telling you and me today that your cracks have been sealed. Your cracks have been sealed. Be faithful where you are. Just be faithful. Be faithful. My sister, be faithful. Amen. God loves you. Do you know what he does? Be faithful. Be faithful. Be very faithful. The day, one day God is going to come like this. will say, brother, how many people have seen this brother on, the, on this pulpit before? You've never, haven't you? But when God purposes to bless you, he goes and he picks you, just the way I've picked him, and causes you to sit with kings. When you are faithful. Amen. Don't complain about where you are. Don't complain about your family. Amen. Don't complain. Don't. Tell God, God, I thank you. Thank you that God, it's difficult, but I'll stay there. I will pray for daddy. I will pray for mommy. Thank you. I will pray. I will pray. And God will honor you. Amen? 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 Amen. Oh my God. I don't feel like ending this service, but I have to end it. Amen? Amen? I have to end it. Do we have anybody here who has not given his life to Jesus? Brother, just stay here. There's an anointing. Amen? There's an anointing. Do you have anybody here who is not born again? You want to give your life to Jesus? Or you backslid and you want to give back your life to the Lord? I want to pray for you. Just shoot up that hand and I will believe God for you. Do we have any kind of a person here? I don't want to leave you behind. Do we have anybody? Please, if I don't see you, just wave like this that I may see you. Do we have anybody? Oh, I see that hand. God bless you. Let's appreciate that hand. Any other person? Just stay there, brother. Just stay there, brother. Any other person? Any other person? 
any other person wants to give her life or his life to the Lord, whether one or two, or rededicate your life to the Lord, whatever you are, would you, can I see, can, can, would you just come, clap for this young lady as she comes. Oh, this is beautiful. Amen. I want to pray for this young lady. Amen. Would you just stand here? What is your name? Martha, God loves you. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Put both of your hands here. Say, Lord Jesus, this afternoon, I stand before you because I know you love me. Tonight, I give my life to you. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Change my heart. Make it ever true. Lord, may you help me to lead a life that glorifies your name. Spirit of God, fill me afresh and bless me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Martha. I pray that you bless her. I pray that she'll enjoy the joy of salvation. And that, Father, you will keep her and give her grace to serve you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I, want, I want somebody from the discipleship ministry. Here, please, quickly. Somebody from the discipleship ministry, Chloe's team discipleship ministry or anyone from YLT quickly oh thank you Kimani thank you thank you would you take Martha and just walk with her you can take you can use Trinity one eh? just go to Trinity one a big hand clap for Martha as she goes we thank God for that brother are you a preacher you're gonna be one Hallelujah. Raise your hands. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and scatter darkness from before your path. May the Lord grant you the grace of faithfulness on your waiting rooms and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you.